Stephen Hung, and other scholars, were especially fascinated with the most mysterious invisible force of all. Magnetism. The result of their fascination was the creation of the world's first magnetic compass. This was called a synon. A section of lodestone, which is naturally magnetic, was carved into the shape of the Big Dipper and placed on a polished board. The circular center of the board represented heaven, and the square represented earth, and the spoon, the Big Dipper. This constellation was especially sacred, as two stars in the Big Dipper always point to the pole star. The emperor was the earthly counterpart of the pole star, around which all the other stars rotated. The master himself, Confucius said, He who governs virtuously may be compared to the polar star, which keeps its place as the other stars turn around it. All visitors to the emperor had to sit to his south so that the stars could rotate around his head. Therefore, officials around the emperor were seen as inhabiting the constellations rotating around the polar star. And so the synon was a mystical instrument used not for navigation, but as a tool for geomancy, or feng shui. Feng Shui is a technique for aligning cities and houses harmoniously with the Earth's forces. Forces detected with the aid of this compass. The Sinon evolved into more complex Feng Shui compasses, which is still in use today. Hundreds of years before the first compass was to be found on a European ship, small factories in China mass-produced a variety of compass designs. The world's first prototype of the dry modern navigational compass was called the magnetic turtle. South was indicated by the direction of the needle, which was attached to a magnet concealed inside the model. Around the year 850 AD, Chinese ships began to carry a water compass to help them navigate during murky weather and storms when there was no way to use the sun or the stars. This simple mariner's compass would always point south, unlike modern compasses today.